Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. We've got some really nice looking colonies to show you in this video. But before we get started, tonight at 7 p.m. Central Time, this is November the 1st, we are going to be doing a live chat talking all things beekeeping and especially winter beekeeping. If you have your questions, bring them tonight. We'll see you there. All right, so we're going to be showing you this insulated hive, showing you these ripped colonies. This is originally the package versus nuke challenge. We have not brought in any bees to this yard since we started. We haven't done a whole lot this year on this package versus new challenge, but they're looking good, exactly what we wanted to see. Uh, they look pretty good going in with winter weight. Only one of these looks light. Let's uh, let's pop into them and, and get to it. Now, real quick, I'm gonna address this hive. I did pop the lid, and you can see some of the bees right there. We smoked them down a little bit. Um, it's been an interesting journey using a polystyrene hive for the first time. I would like to say thanks again to Blue Sky Bee Supply for supplying them. Um, I really love the insulation factor. I really think there's a difference with insulated hives versus wooden hives. And we're going to be testing that more next year. But one of the things about this style of hive is they're really bad about building bridge comb and burr comb up between not as much on the lid because you have this um gap right here i mean you get a little bit and i expect that i get that with all of my lids especially these that have the nice half inch rim underneath but this is where i'm having issues is when i try to get in that next box below almost every time there is i'm having to pry the frames Whew, that's got some weight to it oh yeah these bees are ready for winter but so it's they're gluing this up and it's prying it up and I'm crushing bees when that happens I had to see how I broke this frame right here I'm having to pry it up just a little bit you can see the damage I'm doing over here and then I'm going to push these down one by one whoops small high beetle collateral damage um, and, and just push these frames down it's it's a really big pain in the rear it took me hey look at that that bee's got propolis on its legs. Gluing up to high for winter. It's 58 degrees Fahrenheit today, by the way. But yeah, it's a huge pain. You're bringing that up, you can't do it. It took a lot of muscle to be able to hold that up and pry these down individually. It's rough on our boxes. It aggravates the bees. You're not even in the hive yet, and you're already getting on their bad side. Um, I don't like that. I think it's just, uh, there needs to be a little bit more space in between the frames or um, in the next box above. I don't know exactly, but there's something wrong with the, the bee space in my opinion. You can see where all these bees have been crushed mainly because I'm pulling it up part way. The bees are coming out and I can't get the box all the way off and yeah, I just can only hold it up so long and then it's, it's an issue. However, the insulation seems to be doing very well for the bees and they actually produce a good bit of honey for this year off of this insulated hive right here. So there's a lot of pros and um, there are, are some cons. I, you know, people are like, well, this indention you're putting here in the corners, it, the more that you pack that in, the harder that gets. And so over time, it doesn't really get much worse. I don't have enough experience with that yet. This is my first winter with insulated hives. I'm really excited about it. But it's uh, definitely a new experience. I'm just not sure about the polystyrene long term. There's not a whole lot of bees down here. So we're not even going to fool with those bees. We're not seeing a whole lot of brood right now. Let's uh, go ahead and go to the next box. I'm going to smoke these down. And someone will be like, well, do they need this bottom box? You know, you probably could remove this bottom box and just stick them all in the top. But, and then I have to store that equipment somewhere, protect it from mice and wax moss. I just leave it on. Bees will move up to the top box. We don't have very rough winters here. The more and more I've switched to a carny type of bee, the more I'm seeing smaller clusters um, going into winter. I wouldn't say they're weak. Woohoo, about got that one. Oh. But the more I'm seeing clusters that are around seven and eight frames strong. And I guess some carnies that are definitely in the 10 to 12 frame area, but 
Now more, more smaller stuff, but they really start doing great coming out of winter. They just, they just take off really well. Wow, they've glued that down good. Let's quickly get through this one, see what's going on. I'm curious if they have any brood in here. Look at all that food stuff. This top box is incredibly heavy. I'm just gonna stick that right over here. I'm just curious to see if they've got any brood at all in this top box. That's just foodstuffs. The next frame is just foodstuffs. The next one over looks like mostly food. If there is any brood, it's probably on this frame right here. You know, right now I'd say a cluster strength of probably around six to seven frames on this one. Interesting. Interested to see how they come out of winter. They, when we switched this hive from a wooden box to an insulated hive, from what I could tell, it looked like it really helped them take off. And it, it produced the most honey out of these uh, colonies over here. And they didn't hardly had to get, get any feed going into winter at all. Yeah, that's just nothing but solid honey there. So this is a great time for this colony for some oxalic acid vapor. Again, it's November 1st. Boy, that's heavy. Usually do most of my oxalic acid vapor treatments late November and in December. You try to get it done before the winter solstice. That's what well, that's what I do anyways. You might have to adjust a little bit. And uh, so there's that hive right there. And they, they got plenty of food. We'll see how this insulated hive does going through winter. Let's check these other ones real quick. Now these have screen bottom boards, and so does that one right there. So um, I put the inserts in them going into winter. I don't like keeping them completely open, but there's still a lot more ventilation compared to a solid bottom board. Oh yeah, I like the look of that. I do like the look of that right there. You know, we sold several nukes off of these package versus nuke challenge this year. Um, it wasn't a good honey year, so we sold more bees than what we uh, planned on selling. That still worked out. I got a decent bit of food. This frame feels like it's pretty full. Not completely capped, though. Yeah, there's a lot of food over there, though. Interesting. Let's see if we can find some brood in this hive right here. Let's go ahead and go down to the next box. And I can look up from underneath. See what's going on. <sighs> Looks like there's a lot more bees in this hive. Looks really good. Now this colony requeened itself. So part of that might just be the vigor of the young queen. I'm not sure if that one requeened itself or not. So that, that queen's a, you know, at least a year older, I would say. And there's a d big difference there. And I think the Whew, got plenty of weight. I think the longer your brooding season is, the, the shorter lifespan your queens are going to last. All right, let's see if we can find us some brood down in here. Everything's so much harder to pry. It's so much cooler. Now people are going to be like, Cayman Reynolds, what are you doing? It's, you said it's 58 degrees. Why are you in the hives? Ah, there's some brood. Well, because I'm not gonna be in there long. Bees can handle this weather very well. It's the brood that's sensitive. That's a decent bit of brood right there. It's not a ton, it's a, a little bit. A few more winter bees. Got a little bit more over here. That top box is very full, but you can still see a little bit of capped honey. Oops, small hive beetle. And you can just see a little bit of capped honey. So they're gonna stay down here and they're going to eat that first and work their way up. I really like what I'm seeing with this hive. Ooh, I like the feel of this one. It's not very heavy. Oh, there's the queen right there. There she is. You see she's got a little bit of a blue dot left on her. And it, it's wore off a little bit. I'm going to be experimenting with some 
better paints because the uh, Posca pins have been letting me down. Seeing brood on this frame. Fuzzy young bees. This frame's emerging out right here. This looks really good. This is what exactly what I'd like to see. Let's just check one more and then we're going to throw this one together and go to the next one. So we, we don't need to do a lot. <laughs> Bee bread. Uh, you know, not a whole lot of brood over here. But plenty of coverage. Goodness. Um, gauging off what I saw in the top box in this right here, I'm going to go for around 11 to 12 frames of bees. Now, I'm not saying that's the size they're going to look like in January, but I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing with this hive right here. Good weight. They don't need any more food. Now, that's for Tennessee folks because, uh, you know, we're, our bees are going to be doing things in late February that your bees aren't even going to be thinking about for a couple months if you're far north. Getting out, flying, and gathering maple pollen, and hen bit, and dandelion, and all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, there's just so many ways to do beekeeping. Single brood going into winter. Doubles. I know some guys that swear by triple deeps, and just all kinds of stuff. Man, beetle, beetle, beetle. There we go. And uh, the main thing is just having plenty of food, great queens, dead mites, good nutrition, all that kind of stuff that we preach here. It's really not that complicated. That's the cool thing about beekeeping, especially if you're, especially if you're a carpenter, you can just uh, build your equipment to suit your fancies. Oh yeah, look at that. That's what I like to see right there. You know what? See what they look like right here. Gauging on this, I can see a little bit of daylight through this frame. So let's just say there's five frames of bees, give or take, over here. Gauging through here, I'm going to go. I'm going to say this is probably about the same strength as the last one. And it looks really good. I'm seeing capped honey all the way over this adjacent frame. I'm seeing capped honey over here. You know, a lot of times we do these videos and we show you more than what we definitely more than what we would be doing if it was just Laurel and I working through a bee yard. We're just trying to give you a little perspective so you can kind of see what we expect this time of the year. Maybe what we'd like to see but we're not seeing. Um, I, I really love seeing clusters, healthy clusters between 8 and 12 frames of bees right now. Some of them are even bigger than that. Um, but definitely 8 to 12 is, is what I'm looking for. And a lot depends on when we made the splits up. The ones we made in August do not look this big. There's no surprise there. Another beetle. I'm telling you what, I'm on a, a spree. There's plenty of weight in those top boxes. So, you know, we purchased these three packages. We babied them. You can watch the package versus nuke challenge. We requeened them. We did so many. We, you know, we fed them. We did mite treatments on all of these. They look good. And they're going to go, I firmly believe all these are going to survive winter. They're going to look really good. And we are, we paid for our investment this year. We didn't have a great year. The honey flow wasn't that awesome, especially in this year, which is our poorest. We didn't make honey off of that one, off of this one, and one of the others over there. But it still was not that great. But we sold either three, I know at least three nukes off of just this package versus nuke challenge this year. Maybe four nukes. I cannot remember. We used them for shaking bees out during the summer for mating nukes, splits. So we at least paid for everything in the first 365 days. We get all these bees to go through winter and come on out. We can get an average season next year. They're actually going to pay, not only pay for themselves, they're going to make money. And that's the kind of stuff we're trying to help you all with. It's a fun way to have a hobby or a sideline or a business because when it's just a constant money sink, it's not fun. And it takes a lot of the fun out of it. Let me tell you, Laurel, do you like blowing all of our money on bees? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, I'm pretty good at it though, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we know, we've been there. Anyways, um, thanks for watching all of our videos. I'm going to 
just pop the lids on a couple of those hives and show you what they look like real quick. So coming over here, let's check this out. Look at all those bees. And we still got the frame feeder in there. This one does need a little bit more feed. It's 58 degrees. We're dropping down into freezing tonight. And they look pretty good. But they, they do need more food. Same, lo you know, basically same location. This one, though, I did haul a bunch of bees off of. I've got stuff written on these hives. This one's got a 2020 queen. This colony right here, it says five shakes of bees, 612. So it's, that's been a while. But when you shake five frames of nurse bees out of a colony, that takes a, it takes a while for them to recover from that, especially if they're going into a summer dearth like we are and they're not really prone and you know desiring to brood up a lot. But this has been a great colony for us this year. That looks pretty good. Of course, that's just the top and heat rises, but I popped a, the other box uh, going down in between. They looked really good as well. Really happy with what I'm seeing. This one right here is a split that we made off of these bees over here in summer. And boy, they look good too. Boy, does, doesn't that just make you say, winter, come on now. We need to hurry up and get to that spring flow. Now let me tell you, when you don't smoke the bees and you pop the lid like this, the bees are telling you, hurry up and get that lid back on, idiot. So, they'll get back in there. Anyway, thanks for watching our videos. Look forward to seeing you tonight in the live chat. And if you have any questions, leave them below in the live chat.